we can now look at some of the prosthetic solutions that we have for a dentulous patient or a patient that is going to be dentulated and in terms of the quality of life. So obviously I don't have to say that the, just the conventional denture is not a very comfortable thing to wear. And then we can improve the retention of the conventional denture with two implants and an over denture. But that type of a prosthesis, that denture, is only retained by implants. It's assisted by the implants. It has, um, it's not supported by the implants at all. The only way a denture would be supported by the implants is if you have a bar type of a uh, prosthesis. And if it's made properly, if the denture is made properly with the pra framework, preferably inside metal framework, and you have the rigid stops with the bar, that's when it's both getting the support from the implants and from the tissue. And then we go to implant bridge, which is fully screw retained and supported by implants. And I think it's hard to argue that it's probably have the best quality of life for the patient. Good, but what kind of evidence do we have in the literature that this type of procedure actually works? We have a lot of evidence today. So Dr. Malo um, started this 20 years ago, or close to 20 years ago. He started gathering data. Is this procedure going to last? And when he actually first presented this, you can imagine the uproar. Nobody believed him. He said, this is outrageous. Four implants supporting a full set of teeth. There's no way this is going to work. It's going to fail. Sure enough, he believed in what he presented. Um, uh, because he's actually an engineer. Dr. Malo did not start out as a dentist. He started out as an engineer. So as he developed this, he gra gathered a lot, as you can see, a lot of the literature is actually from his institute, but we do have multi-center studies on all on four, and the success rate is in the 90 and up percentile. So we have 10 year studies today, we could say, yes, this procedure is successful. And I must tell you, Dr. Malkin and I have started doing this about six years ago now, and um, uh, I do this with other practitioners, but in our practice together, we have not had one implant fail. And it's a combination of the team and of the patient. Um, it, it's all together. It's not just one person working on this. Because you have to think also, as this, if this person ages, and for example, we keep the teeth, we do this beautiful crown to replace some teeth that she's missing. Now, as she gets older, she's going to be on more medication, dry mouth. Decay. So at 80, all this that what we did 10 years ago might be back to this situation with just some implants in there. She came in and she had a fixed restoration done. You can see on natural teeth that it's not looking that great. <coughs> and this was done in the last four to five years. So she had a, quite a bit of work done. She's not happy with her smile, again, obviously. <laughs> and then I put this picture here. So I don't know if it's, that, it's not the best quality, but when she smiles, she has a pretty gummy smile. So she usually doesn't smile this wide, but I still ask the patient to smile as wide as they can. And so it's kind of a forced smile. And also she has this maxilla that kind of protruded a little bit. And she barely, her vertical is pretty good. But now we start looking at the, and actually in this situation, we just, decided to do an all on four. And this patient actually came in asking if she can be a candidate for all on four. So when first I saw her, I'm thinking, no, <laughs> this is way too many teeth to remove. That's, uh, I asked her to smile. She has this gummy smile. I'm thinking about how much bone I will have to remove. So a lot of cases are very borderline. <coughs> but then you kind of have to listen to the patient. So she's been through a lot of treatment before. And I think a lot of times we just really want to save teeth and psychologically we're attached to saving teeth. And also we always want the ideal treatment. Like if it was me, yeah, I'll probably sit in the chair for, I don't know, 20, 30 appointments. I have no problem. I had actually pretty extensive reconstruction done and I, you know, for aesthetic reasons and I just sat there for eight hours, I had no problem. That makes one of us, <laughs> not me. <laughs> but some of the patients, they, they don't care. They're tired of their teeth. So they had so many problems with them over the years, they come in and I just don't want to deal with this teeth anymore. So you kind of have to understand that even without the financial aspect, which actually is a big thing, is just what 
patient can go through. And some people are very fearful. So you kind of have to include this into the treatment plan. And I keep all these temporary bridges for a long time because if someone breaks a tooth, you can always put it, remove it, send it to the lab, put the temporary back in there. So it's kind of, they have two sets of teeth. So I, when patients ask me, why, do I, why can I go to the final one? I mean, there are, it's not the issue that they have two sets of teeth, but it sells them on that. You have two sets of teeth, everyone has one and you have two. But uh, the issue when I cannot go to the final one is because, not only because of the, uh, we have to make sure that the implants are integrated, but because the tissue is changing, so there are going to be spaces, obviously, so we can, uh, for example, I, I know that in Las Vegas, the patient sits there for three days and they actually manufacture metal reinforcement, <laughs> uh, metal reinforced bridge, but what's going to happen is that you know the gum tissue is going to change. It's okay maybe for a dentulous person, but when you're removing so many teeth and you're changing uh, the bone contours, that's not possible. And also, again, you have to work out the fact that the lip position, the vertical, all that. <coughs>